Hello, everybody, and welcome to my masterpiece. Uh, my name is Shauna Renshaw. I am 26 years old and a fourth year student at UTM. Um, right now, I'm actually in the process of applying for a position in the Ontario Police Academy. Uh, it's going to take a little bit, but I'm almost there. Uh, let's get started. My sample is viewed under the polarized light microscope. Uh, there's a few, few reasons why I chose this one. Um, first was I wanted a depth of field that fell in between the stereo microscope and the SEM. This is because the stereo microscope kind of made the overall pattern of my sample quite obvious and I wanted to get a little bit more detail that isn't quite visible to the naked eye. Uh, however, the SEM did go a little too far and to keep it realistic for you guys and your guessing, I decided that something in between these two microscopes would be perfect and that is why I went with the polarized light microscope. Um, second, detail was important for this one. Uh, like I said, I wanted to show as much additional detail as I could by moving past what the overall pattern is, but not going too far into what it is made up of. Um, and to do that, I wanted something with the depth of field. So, uh, yeah, moving on, cre creating the contrast was also important. It was probably one of the biggest goals because of what this sample is. Um, the detail associated with the specimen, it, there's darker spots that you'll see in the picture and it's part of the reoccurring pattern, but it's not, I don't wanna give too much away, um, but being able to manipulate the light of the PLM as well as adding different filters allowed me to get the contrast that I wanted. Um, that kind of leads into the versatility of the microscope was also one of the big reasons why I was drawn to this one. Being able to rotate the stage, being able to manip manipulate the lighting using the different filters and stuff like that made it so that I could add my own artistic touch to it. Um, that definitely helps. So those are the main reasons why I chose this, that and I didn't really get to use much of it on my own during class. So um, yeah. Okay, so samples and parameters. So as we've learned in class, the PLM is mainly used to observe the optically anisotropic characteristics of a specimen under magnification while ultimately improving the contrast of the image. Um, like you can see here in the let me move this screen a little bit in the picture. So you have your sample, but there is a polarizer and an analyzer. The polarizer sits between the light source and the sample, while the analyzer sits between the um, optical pathway and your sample. So having that and then introducing the retardation plates that can produce the kind of interference of colors to provide that de desired contrast. Um, it's very interesting. Um, so for my specimen though, I used a 450 times magnification and added a bit of a cross polarizer retardation plate because like I said, it's, it showed a lot more of the contrast that I wanted, shadows, lighting. I don't wanna give too much away because you'll see it in, in a second. Um, but the, and then I had the, manipulated the light source a little bit. Uh, I had a lot more light at the bottom than I did coming from up top. So that kind of also added to the shadows that you'll see in a second. So good luck everybody. Uh, I do have a hint. So as soon as you see the picture show up, it'll be about 20 seconds of guessing and then I'll have a little hint show up on the left hand side. Okay, and there is my masterpiece. So I'll give you guys 20 seconds. Okay, and there is your hint. So the darker areas of this image is part of a very long 
and reoccurring and even overlapping pattern that shows the entrance into what is considered maybe an upside down teardrop shaped pocket in which something was removed, possibly by slithering and movement. Hopefully that guys is what you can get from this and you can make a somewhat good guess if you guys got it. I'm very happy. Um, thank you so much for watching.